Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we are going to be painting flex track. Now I know there are many techniques for painting track. And in the past, I have always painted my track after it was in place on my layout. For the first time, I'm going to be painting it all at the workbench. Now, keep in mind when you're painting your flex track, if you choose to paint it before you attach it to your layout, you need to keep moving it, keep flexing it, so that the ties don't dry and stick to the rails. So make sure that you keep slightly moving it. Okay, well, Let's head over to the workbench and get started on it. Okay, so we're gonna start painting our track. Um, this is the track that I am using. So the first thing I do is I spray it. And, um, I, I just did a misting, a light misting of both a gray and a brown. And uh, this said, uh, these are a uh, matte finish. You can just use a flat gray primer. This is what I had on hand and it's both paint and primer in one. But actually, if you just have a flat primer, I recommend that over these. But I just put a primer over it just so that the acrylic paint has something to stick to. I feel if you just use acrylic paint right over the plastic that it can um, chip off or peel off when you're um, ballasting your track. Um, one thing that you might want to do is cut the ends of some of them at an angle. And then you want to remember to cut from the other angle also. Now it doesn't have to be every single one, but just here and there. And then also do it on uh, the other side also. Then you want to cut out some of the spacers in between the ties. That way you can move some of them so they're not all evenly spaced. Then you can take your um, saw, little hand saw, and scrape the ends. And then also going down. Be very careful that you don't snap them, snap them off. I don't know if you'll be able to see the texture on there. So the reason I put the spray paint on there first is to see where I've scraped. Otherwise, it's very hard to see because uh, it's all just uh, this dark brown. Uh, it's uh, kind of hard to see, but now you can definitely see um, where I've cut it, where I've scraped. Um, now, now we can pick our colors and I think I'm going to do a combination of all of these right here for the ties. So I'm using neutral gray, Mississippi mud, raw umber, and desert sand. And we're just going to do a combination of those all over this. Okay, so as you can see, I have my four colors. In my palette and again I'm using raw umber Mississippi mud 
neutral gray and desert sand now we want to keep our colors a little dark because this is the color of the ballast that I'm using and you can see it's a tan so we want to keep our ties uh, darker than this so that they stand out so that there's a little bit of a contrast so again we're just going to use all the colors and mix them up and we are going to be dry brushing over this after this all dries so well after we get our color on here what we're going to do is we're going to put a black wash over this and then after that black wash dries then we'll do some dry brushing now you could use a bigger brush for for this part okay I've got about half of it painted now we'll go back in with our smaller brush we'll paint some of these a little different shade we can do some that are just the, the straight gray it may be hard to tell on camera but there's a slight difference between the ties and you don't want to go too thick because you don't want to cover up the detail of the tie plates every once in a while run your brush along the edge of your rails so that you don't get um, paint build up that's too heavy inside there we'll clean our brush off and clean up the inside of that rail so every once in a while if you find a color that you mix that you like go back and paint some back on the area that you've already done now you do want to flip it around while you're working on it just to make sure that you have everything painted all the ends painted make sure there's no thick paint built up anywhere on it now we can take our desert sand and you can see it's kind of gray because our brush is dirty we're just going to brush over them we're just dry brushing just scrubbing over it it's kind of a dirty tan color now for the tie plates in the sides of the rails we're going to use burnt sienna and burnt umber and we're probably going to do 50 50 yeah I think 50 50 looks nice now it doesn't have to be perfect sorry you can probably hear my furnace running in the background so as you can see I just brushed some on the ties uh, I accidentally got some down here but we'll wait and when we're all done we'll go back with probably the Mississippi mud and touch up any little mistakes that we made so then you also have to do the other side now don't worry if it's not perfect the next step we're going to put a black wash a lot a lot of water and a very little amount of black paint and we're going to put a wash over this entire piece of track now before I put my black wash on I am going to take the paint off of the top of the rails I found it actually does a better job if you just take your top of your fingernail you just run it the whole length uh, it takes it off really nice 
So I've just taken black paint and a lot of water and mixed up a wash. Now I'm switching back to my smaller brush and this is a lot more black and very little water and I'm just running it along the very end of the ties. And I'll do this on both sides. I like the end of my ties to be uh, darker. Okay, and then we'll flip it around and do the other side. And every once in a while you'll see I got some up on the top of the ties. And so I just take some water, just kind of feather it out. If the whole tie ends up being dark, that's fine. You can make some completely dark. Okay, let me show you what it looks like so far. And once we get it in place on the layout and get all the ballast put on, then we can go in with pastel chalks and add some dark streaks down the center, some rust colors on the uh, tie plates and the side of the rails. But we can go in and add more detail after it's on the layout. Okay, so to finish this off, I dry brushed a little bit of slate gray over the ties. And then I took black paint and a sponge and very little. Uh, I did the edges and I, I just went over all of the wood parts. I haven't cleaned the top of the rail yet. But I don't know if you'll be able to see the, um, the sponging on it. I won't know what this looks like until I go to edit it. So I'm hoping that you can see the dots on there from the sponging. All right, so it's a lot of work, but I am thrilled. I am just thrilled with how this has turned out. And I probably won't go I won't put as much detail into some of the track that is back further, but definitely any track that is near the edge of the layout, I will definitely go this detailed with it. And really I'm not having, I don't have a lot of track on my layout. So I don't mind going pretty detailed with most of it. Um, it really, I don't think um, it'll take me that long. Well, as you can see, I am preparing to lay my track. And I have already drawn the very simple track plan onto the layout. Um, for my large curve here, I took a piece, a long piece of strip wood and put a screw right into the center, drilled a hole in that end of the, the strip wood to put a pencil in it. Then I simply drew the circle. Um, you can see it goes pretty close to the wall, but I am an inch and a quarter, inch and a half away from the wall. Um, I run small equipment. I prefer small equipment. Um, so I will have no problem as far as clearance back there. Um, Painting flex track is uh, a tedious job. Uh, it can get kind of boring. Um, I listen to music while I'm painting my flex track. Uh, I do want to recommend that you get on the internet and pull up some images of real railroad track and what ties, railroad ties actually look like. 
And if you're modeling a specific area, try to find out what the tracks look like in that area so that you can sort of duplicate it. But if you set a goal, say you're going to paint uh, six to ten pieces of track, by your fourth piece, you're going to figure out what colors work best for you, what technique works best for you, and you're going to discover your own little shortcuts to speed up the process. So again, just uh, apply the techniques that I showed you, but apply them in your own way and you will find out what works best for you and what you're comfortable with. Um, with painting the flex track over at my workbench, um, many times I would carry a piece over and lay it over here uh, because the lighting is different over here than it is at my workbench. So keep that in mind. Um, you don't want to paint a whole bunch of flex track at your workbench and then put it on your layout and discover that uh, the lighting is different and that it looks different when it's on your layout. So, well, please take a minute and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to click on that bell up in the corner to be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy modeling, everyone.